What's going on everybody? So um, I got a message on one of my videos yesterday from a woman who is extremely frustrated and I feel her pain. She's been trying to do the ketogenic diet for a while. She says she's been doing it very strictly and she has failed to lose any weight. And uh, I definitely feel her on this. There are some people who will attempt to do the ketogenic diet and for a number of reasons, they won't burn any fat. Um, and there's a number of different potential explanations for this. I don't know her particular case, but what I want to do in this video is troubleshoot some potential problems that you might be having in actually burning fat on the ketogenic diet. So these explanations can actually go from the very simple to the very complex. And in my opinion, it's often the simplest explanations that are, are where we should start because those are often the explanation. Um, but uh, I want to go through each of these and we'll start with the more complex ones. So the first one is hormonal imbalance. And this could be a number of different things, right? So for women in particular, um, there's a few different things that could be going on. And I'll talk about men as well, but I'll start with women. Um, number one is thyroid protection. Um, women can go into hypothyroidism very, very easily. And that's a condition where your thyroid is not producing enough thyroid hormone um, to signal to the brain to burn fat. Um, and so one of the things we really need to do in our ketogenic diets and our intermittent fasting protocols, if we are women, is we, we need to include selenium uh, in our diet or good sources of selenium in our diet. Uh, and that can come from mushrooms, that can come from a number of green leafy vegetables, but most abundantly from Brazil nuts. Uh, and what I would do is I would include at least five a day. I've talked about this numerous times on this channel. Brazil nuts are a great food for thyroid protection. Um, other hormonal issues that could be going on with women, uh, there's also the potential for estrogen dominance. Now, um, one thing about estrogen dominance is that it is, it's not necessarily having your estrogen too high. It simply means that your estrogen is out of balance with your progesterone production. And these two hormones, they, they balance each other out. So estrogen uh, is the primary female sex hormone. It uh, leads to stress. It leads to cellular growth. Um, and if left unchecked, those things can go out of control. Estrogen has a lot of good factors about it as well, but if it's not checked and balanced by progesterone, um, it could go out of control and it could lead to uncontrolled stress and uncontrolled cellular growth, which is why we see a lot of problems with breast cancer, a lot of problems with uterine cancer, and a lot of problems with uterine fibroids and, and a whole host of other issues that come from estrogen dominance. Um, and uh, progesterone, it, it leads to calm. It also shuts down cellular growth. So that's why it's extremely important to, to get those two balanced. Um, because if they're out of balance, oh, like I said, a whole host of really bad things can happen. But estrogen do dominance has become more and more of a problem. And just to give you some perspective here, 100 years ago, um, women on average were not having their menstrual cycle until they, until they were like 16 years old. Today, women are on average having their menstrual cycles starting when they're 12. Uh, and I know I'm a man talking about this, but this is going off of statistics here. Um, and so we're seeing estrogen actually changing the, the uh, life cycle of a female. And we're seeing higher and higher rates of breast cancer, higher and higher rates of uterine cancers, higher and higher rates of uterine fibroids, and a whole like I said, a whole host of issues. So what do we do to prevent estrogen dominance? Well, one of the reasons why estrogen dominance is becoming so prevalent is because exogenous xenoestrogens are getting into our systems, right? So um, they, they come in through plastics, they come in through some of our hygiene products, they come in through our environment. And these xenoestrogens, they can mimic the hormone estrogen. And particularly women who are going through menopause, this is a problem because at menopause, both estrogen and progesterone drop. But if you have a lot of xenoestrogens coming in, the estrogen can remain high while the progesterone drops and you get this crazy, crazy imbalance. Um, and that's why a lot of women start to put on a lot of weight at menopause and they become even in more danger of cancer. 
So my advice is to get rid of the plastics, to clean out your hygiene products, get rid of anything that has parabens in it, um, and, and opt for more natural hygiene products. And uh, that could definitely be something that could help your hormonal balance. Also, be mindful that a lot of dairy has exogenous estrogens in it. And a lot of the food we eat, including the plants that have been um, sprayed with pesticides, they can also have uh, exogenous estrogens or, in, or estrogen mimickers in them. And so opt for organic plant, uh, organic uh, produce, um, opt for uh, organic dairy um, and, and, and dairy that has is hormone free and meat that is hormone free. So definitely options there. Now for men and women, um, there there's also a potential hormonal issue that could keep you from uh, one getting into ketosis in the first place, but also from burning fat, and that is massive amounts of stress. Um, when you undergo stress, your adrenals get activated and you begin um, releasing glucose from your liver. Right. So if and we all have liver glycogen built up, regardless of if we've been low carb or not, um, that glycogen gets released from your liver and your muscles uh, because it puts you in a fight or flight response. The reason why we have that ability is so we can get a quick uh, source of glucose into our bloodstream in, need, in case we need to take action. So if you're undergoing a lot of stress, you're constantly in a situation where your liver is releasing glucose in your bloodstream um, that could definitely keep you from getting in, into ketosis in the first place, and it could definitely keep you from burning fat. So make sure you're getting lots and lots of sleep. Make sure that you're uh, including magnesium-rich sources of food in your diet. Uh, make sure you're getting enough minerals. Minerals are so important on the ketogenic diet because we lose water when we go low carb. When we burn off muscle glycogen, you're, you're, you're also losing three grams of water for every gram of glycogen you lose. So when you get a uh, a shortage of minerals in your body, that can also lead to an increased stress response and dehydration can lead to an increased stress response. So sleep, hydration, minerals, um, and in cases where you are under extreme stress and close to adrenal burnout, you have to think that the ketogenic diet might not be the best diet for you, nor may intermittent fasting be the best protocol for you. Um, people who are close to adrenal stress, uh, uh, adrenal burnout, definitely need to include a lot of calories in their diet. They definitely need to get lots of good fats, but also potentially some carbohydrate into their system to help uh, in, in balancing out um, that cortisol production. Um, Another thing that could potentially uh, keep you from burning fat on the ketogenic diet is actually having too many ketones in your system at any one time. So a lot of people, when they're getting into the ketogenic diet, they'll load up on things like exogenous ketones and load up on things like MCT oil. Now, MCT oil is great while you're adapting into ketosis because it can help you to produce ketones. But once you're adapted, if you continue to put MCT oil on everything you have, everything you're eating, um, it's extra energy in your bloodstream. Those ketones still need to be burnt off. And so if you're not getting enough exercise and you're consuming a lot of uh, fats that are gonna be rapidly transformed into ketones, um, that's no different than eating a, a, a having high blood sugar all the time. You still have really high amounts of energy floating around in your bloodstream. And so you need to be burning those off. If you're not burning those off, you are not going to burn fat. The goal of being on the ketogenic diet and being in ketosis for a while is to begin using, mobilizing and using your own fat stores for fuel. So if you're taking a lot of ketones and you're artificially raising or exogenously raising your ketone levels all the time, that's not going to help you to burn fat. You want to be mobilizing your own fat out of your own fat cells for fuel. And you can only do that by being uh, either in a fasted state for a while or being on a ketogenic diet for a while uh, and without having all that extra energy floating around. And the last one is the most simple, simple explanation, and that is time, right? 
a lot of people don't understand something about the ketogenic diet, and that is that it is not a magical spell. Just like any other diet, it's gonna take time and it's gonna take consistency. And in fact, a lot of studies have demonstrated that you don't burn fat any faster on the ketogenic diet than you do on any other diet. The reason that we do the ketogenic diet is because it has a whole host of other benefits. You can get a lot more energy from fueling yourself with your own fat stores and having that steady supply of fuel available to you at all the time um, than you could from fasting or from dieting with glucose or, or using glucose as your main fuel source. Glucose burns way faster than fat does and so you end up getting crashes. Um, so understand that it's gonna take time for you to burn fat. There, there, there is nothing magic here or anything like that. And like I said, I'm a keto advocate. I love the ketogenic diet for all the benefits it's given me, but we can't lie to ourselves about what those benefits are. And we can't lie to everybody about, you know, whether or not they're gonna lose fat more rapidly than with another diet. So that's what I got for you today. If you're frustrated with your rate of fat burning on the ketogenic diet. I hope I've helped you today. And if you want to learn more, I've got a completely free course called Start Keto Right. It's at www.startketoright.com. You can check that out. We have grocery lists. We have two cookbooks. Um, and I'm always open for questions. So if you have questions, you can put them below. Talk to you guys soon.